What's up guys, Kudokun here. So, a new MLP set came out like five-ish months ago, and I said I would cover it. And then I didn't. Organizing a review of MLP sets is a little difficult because each of the different card types is so scattered, it's hard to choose exactly how many of each card I want to cover. Of course, there's always the option of just reviewing every single card in the set, but those are really long, they take a really long time to make, and pretty much nobody likes them or watches them. So screw it, that's what we're gonna do today. We are just gonna look at every single card in the set, all 140 of them. So two things before we get started. First, I think I might have missed reviewing one or two sets, so some of my uh, ideas or theories might be a little bit behind because I don't know all the cards in those sets. And two, I'm not a competitive player, so some of the things that I might talk about might be drowned out by the metagame. I'm just judging this stuff by my own perspective and my own knowledge of the game. So let's not waste any more time, let's get started. So a quick warning, uh, I actually haven't seen a lot of these cards except for the main characters. I pretty much just downloaded all the images and got started. I know that the mains in this set follow a theme like they have in past sets where you do one thing to flip all of them. In this case, it's pay two action points. They get an awesome effect and then they become vanillas on their other side. Which is great for me because it fits in with Queen Chrysalis, my favorite main, and it means that she's now viable again too. So Captain Solano? Solano? Solano. I'm going with Solano. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. I legitimately don't remember. So the Captain's effect is you can pay two action points and gain two victory points and then flip this card over. Which is... Interesting, honestly. I mean, two victory points on their own aren't that much, but if you're doing some kind of alternate win condition deck where, like, you're trying to get victory points through your uh, friends and through your cards rather than actually winning face-offs, this could be pretty good. And if there's a card in the set that lets you continuously flip this card back over and keep getting the two victory points, this could turn into something. Grubber, you can pay two to exhaust all all cards on your opponent's side of the field, and they don't ready during their next ready phase. Um, this is okay. I mean, that's certainly annoying, but I don't really know if it's necessarily good. It relies a lot on you having to wait until your opponent actually has some kind of scary board to actually flip into, which isn't normally what you're looking for. You're looking for something that you can flip as early as possible. Also, it really just annoys your opponent for one turn. I don't know. I don't know if I personally like this very much. Um, like I was saying before, if there's a card in this set that will let you flip back over continuously, I could see some potential, but it's probably not that impressive. Princess Sky Star, you can get two two-power seashell friends in play, which is... I like this. I like the idea of pink starting to get tokens, because pink has a lot of cards in it where you can sacrifice your own friends to get effects. So if we can start getting some tokens in pink, then we can get some really hilarious plays out of it. Your opponent's not going to think it's funny, but you're going to think it's funny. Fan favorite Tempest Shadow, or Temper Tantrum as I like to call her. Pay two, put a troublemaker from your deck onto the field face up, which... I don't know, it seems fine. I really don't know who you would get with this though. Um, I mean, I guess you could get like... Like a yellow Parasprite or like a Grumpy Pie or something just really disruptive and get it onto the field immediately to slow your opponent down. Like having to start the game out with a yellow Parasprite in play is really, really tough. Or uh, just having a Grumpy Pie in play immediately so that you just have no chance of beating it. That sounds potentially okay, but I don't know if it's necessarily as powerful as some of the other effects. There could be a Troublemaker in this set that changes my mind though, we'll see. Capper Dapper Dawes, pay two, reveal the top five cards of your deck, and for every card with an even power number, you put one card from your discard pile into your hand. Ooh, well, meow, as somebody over there at Interplay really liked Capper. When you see a card like this, you always have to consider what a deck would look like if you built specifically around this one effect. So imagine for a second, you have a deck where every single card either has a two or a four in its power place. That means Using this effect, you are guaranteed to put five cards of your choice from your discard pile into your hand. That's... <laughs> oh, oh, that's really stupid. Oh man, this sounds like it could be a pretty fun deck. I want to build something around this. Queen Novo, pay two to move any number of your characters at home. Whew. See, again, that's pretty good, but I don't think it's quite as good as it looks on first glance. 
I mean, yeah, you're essentially moving everything at home for free, which <laughs> assault mode activated. But it's just so late in the game for an effect like this to pay off by the time you actually get its full effect that I don't really know if it's worth it by that point. I guess in yellow it kind of is, because you can afford to not have your main flip for a while, since all of your cards are so cheap. But again, all of your cards are so cheap, you're not normally moving a bunch of stuff from your home onto the field at all, you're normally playing them from your hand, so... I don't know, this is right in the middle for me. It's pretty good, but it's not necessarily great. Now, on to the friends. Bolt Biceps, yeah! Two for two power, four color requirement. It has Swift. And whenever one of your Pegasus come into play, then it gets plus one power until the end of the turn. Eh, it's okay. Kind of filler. Another Captain, Cilantro. Four for four, competitive two, gives all of your other pirates competitive two, which is interesting. I actually don't remember if competitive stacks. I'll have to look into that. I don't think it does because that sounds like it get ridiculous, but um, that's still a really cool effect. I don't know how many pirates there are, though. And you can pay one less for the activated abilities of Pirate Ship. I don't know what Pirate Ship is, I guess we'll have to see. On its face value, it looks like a pretty decent card, looks like it can turn pirates into a thing, but I'm just gonna have to see the pirates first. Caramel Apple, when this card comes into play, it gets plus two power till the end of the turn, and its chaos effect lets you put it in play, so, huh. Um, this is okay. If you have a way of guaranteeing that you get its chaos effect off, like a card that lets you look at the top card of your deck and put it back, then I could see this being really useful because, you know, it's four power that stays in play as a two power for free. But other than that, I don't really know how much I like it. Uh, probably just filler if you don't have something that guarantees its chaos effect. Pirate crew, holy crap. <laughs> five for five power with Swift. It is a pirate, of course, and it gives every one of your characters Swift. Every character includes your main. So as long as this obnoxiously big 5 power duder is in play, you're only paying one to move every single one of your characters. To be totally honest, if you're building a deck where blue is your secondary color, I think this is a must-have at at least two. I saw something about a new mechanic that's in this called Traveler, where every time you move a character you get a plus one counter, so I mean... If you're using a Traveler-styled deck and it has blue in it, I don't see why you wouldn't have this in it, too. Rainbow Dash. When this card enters play, if you have another blue character, you can move one of your characters? Uh, okay. I mean, that's alright. It doesn't have a color requirement, but, um... I mean, I kind of wish the blue color requirement thing wasn't there for its effect. That seems a little odd and out of place. Like, it's certainly fine. You get to move one of your characters for free. It's just, uh... This would be a really cool card for a, um, a deck where you're splashing blue in. I don't really know why that color requirement thing is there, but this is a good card overall. Ah, <laughs> you know, I just read this card and it kind of answered my question for the previous card, so okay, I get it. So the Seahorse Rainbow Dash is four for four power, and you can transform it into play for two. So if you already have the other Rainbow Dash in play or any other Rainbow Dash in play, you can just pay two move that card back to your hand, and then play this, and then play the other card again. So if you have the other Rainbow Dash, you play it, you move a character for free, you transform this into play, and then you play it again, and you move another character for free, and you get both. That sounds like it could be really neat. I wouldn't use it with the other Rainbow Dash. I would use it with uh, Winged Wonder, personally, because that's a lot more effective when it comes to moving characters, but the whole transform thing sounds like it could be pretty neat, and uh, the Swift... The Swift, paying one to move a four-power pony around, that sounds like it could be pretty useful. Rainbow Dash, Pirate, yes, yes, more of this. It's two for two, and when you move this card, you frighten a friend? That's ridiculous. So if you have this in play with a Pirate Crew, for one action token, you can move two power onto something and also frighten one of your opponent's friends. Bruh, I'd be bouncing this baby back and forth between both problems like a madman, dude. Patrolling. We call that patrolling. One action token, frighten a friend. One action token, frighten a friend. One action token, frighten a friend. Bruh. Bruh. Is Goosebumps back? Is Goosebump control like a legit strategy again in this set? Because I'm down for that, if that's what the case is. Rainbow Dash and Captain Celadon City. Uh, three for three, competitive three. 
not awful. A uh, little fillery, I guess. I mean, it's a pirate. That's kind of what I have to say for all the cards here that are pirates. Like, even if their effect is kind of mediocre, it's a pirate. Rescue Party, 3 for 2 power with Swift and Traveler. That's what I was talking about. Uh, every time you move this card, you get one action token. Mm. This is probably the first bad card I've seen. I mean, you're losing one action point's worth of power, and you have to move this at least once to get it up to three, but if you pay one to move it once, then you essentially paid four for three power, and then if you move it again, it's five for four power. You're never truly going to pay this card off. I feel like there are probably better cards with Traveler out there. I'm going to move on. Squabble, two for two power. It's a pirate. Um... Uh, when you move another one of your characters, you can rest one of your characters to move this card to. Um, that's not great. <laughs> honestly, that's honestly not that great. Free movement is always pretty good, but I don't know if it's worth it to exhaust a character just to move two power. Um, and it's pretty vanilla after that. I guess if you're using a deck with Stubborn, it's okay. But, uh, other than that, it's filler. Applejack on his pony, 2 for 2 power, no color requirement, and when you play this, if you have another orange character, you can exhaust one of your opponent's characters. And I'm starting to see the trend here, I'm guessing they're going to do this for every character in the main 6, and they're also going to give each of them a sea pony effect. So exhausting a character actually isn't that good. Um, hopefully the sea pony thing makes up for it, but this is pretty lackluster. So Seahorse Applejack has Diligent 2 and the Transform effect. This, honestly, it's not quite as good as the Rainbow Dash thing, because honestly, the best you could do here is play the other Applejack, exhaust a friend, then play this on top of it, and then play the other Applejack and exhaust another friend. So that's pretty bad, but luckily there are other Applejacks that you could play on top of this. Uh, one that I would love to do is, I think it's called Farm Formare, maybe? It's the one that lets you search the top few cards of your deck, for um, a resource and put it in your hand because you can play that transform it into this and then play that again and search for even more cards so in that sense it's pretty good big mac big eater uh guess it's got a pretty big app pie tight if you know what i'm saying uh two for two power at the end of your turn you can dismiss a resource to give this a plus one power counter mm, my question here is can you use this to dismiss your opponent's resources? Because normally when a card comes out like this and just says dismiss a resource, it's talking about either yours or your opponent's. So, I mean, if you could literally just use this to Pac-Man through your opponent's resources and continuously get bigger and buffer, this is great, but I really don't know if it works that way. If it only works for your resources, I really don't know what resources you would really want to feed this guy to actually power him up. So there's that. If the ruling is you can eat through your opponent's resources, this is an amazing card. If they only eat through your resources, it's filler. Boil. <laughs> two for two power, and when this enters play, you can choose one of your friends with plus one power counters on it and give this the same number of plus one counters that that character has. Orange has a lot of really stupid ways to put plus one counters on a character, so this... This could potentially be really, really good in an all-orange deck. Gosh, I can't remember the name of it now. There's an event in orange that lets you put plus one counters on a friend equal to the power it currently has. So if you did something to power up your main character to like 10, um, like giving it plus seven power counters, then you could drop that card to give it uh, 10 power counters so it has 17, and then drop this... So this has 17 power counters on it. Oh my god. Whew. Whew. Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? Um, this is potentially a really good card, but you would have to build around it. It would only be good in a deck where it's specifically meant to be there. I don't think it's a very splashable card. Traveler 2, I have to mention. Um, if you put this in a deck with a lot of Traveler in it, uh, obviously it's a pirate, so you play it with pirate crew and you power something up, and then you go, that has plus six power counters? Boyle has plus six power counters. Aw, yeah. And I guess that's kind of how you play him. Uh, otherwise, it's just a two for two, which is okay. Delivery crew, two for two, and it's a storm character? Really? Is that just what we're calling them? Storm character? Okay. All right, I'm not going to question you, Interplay. So, at the end of each of your turns, you can put a plus one counter on one of your friends, um, which is good. 
Actually, this is an okay card. It's a little fillery. I could see it being edged out by some other cards, but if your entire deck revolves around plus one counters for something, then obviously these are a must-have. I, I can't see why you wouldn't put them in. Grubber Baked Bads. <laughs> I like how it has baked in the name. Just gonna call it Grubber Baked. So Grubber Baked is three for four power, which is good, and it exhausts a character when you put it in play, and it exhausts a friend at the beginning of all of your turns. That's okay. I like that. That's a that's a, that's an okay card. Nice meme. Um, I don't know how many decks it would really fit in, but I guess if you're using a deck that revolves around your opponent's friends being exhausted, it's okay. I mean, push comes to shove, it's three for four power, but um, it's filler unless you need to exhaust stuff, in which case it's probably one of the best exhausting cards that I've seen. Lix Spittle? Is that really his name? I don't remember anybody named Lix Spittle. That's hella gross. Uh, three for three power, and it has Traveler. Um, okay, it's a pirate. <laughs> that's, that's about all I can say there is, it's a pirate. If you can give it the swift, then... You can just pump it infinitely. I really feel like there's got to be better pirates out there, but I mean, it's not bad because it's a pirate. Red Delicious, four for seven power. Ooh, <laughs> what a meme. This is a pretty neat card because if you flip it for a face-off, uh, it's seven power is just so massive, you're probably going to win the face-off. And uh, I mean, it's okay. If you're running a strategy that revolves around beating villains and you can figure out a way to keep putting this on top of your deck, you're probably not going to lose to any villain in the game, to be completely honest, but yeah, overall not bad. Four for seven power, and uh, it's a pretty good card in face-offs. Rescue Party, four for six, again not bad, and uh, this card can't be frightened, and you flip two cards instead of one during face-offs. Okay, um, I mean, it's neat. It's pretty good. Uh, I don't really see... Uh, off the top of my head, I can't really think of where this would fit. I don't really don't know what kind of deck you would put it in, but I mean, I, just, I guess you could put it anywhere that Red Delicious could go, and getting to flip the extra card is pretty worth it. Like, if you're doing some kind of villain farm deck, I could imagine, like, three of these and two Red Delicious, maybe? That'd be a pretty neat core, and then run, like, Purple Zakora so that you could put them on top of your deck. I don't know, I'm getting into really cheesy uh, territory here, but it's okay. It's pretty good. Sea Pony Guard. Four for four, diligent two. Uh, not awful. Uh, filler, if I've ever seen it, though. Berry Punch, four for four. Uh, if your opponent moves a character, you can exhaust this to move it to a different problem instead. <sighs> berry, 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 berry. How do they keep giving you bad cards? Have they ever made a good Berry Punch card? I feel like every single Berry Punch card is meant to be, like, the worst card in the set. I wouldn't necessarily say this is, like, the worst card in the set. I think the, um, the Rescue Party is probably the worst card I've seen in the set, the, um, the canon one to be specific. But let's really break this down for a second, because I know there's going to be somebody out there who's going to think of some kind of weird niche use for this. Um, moving your opponent's friends to a different problem isn't really that bad, especially if they see you have this in play and they can play around it. Uh, I really don't see what the point here is, especially with all the swift I saw <laughs> rolling around. If your opponent, if you're banking on the fact that your opponent does not have swift, then this could be slightly annoying, but it it exhausts itself to use its effect, and it doesn't have stubborn, so it's not going to contribute to face-offs or anything. You're, you're losing so much for so little. Let's say that you pull this off and you move one of your opponent's friends to the wrong problem. They're like, I'm going to put this from home to my problem and you're like well i i gotta gotcha and uh move it to my problem instead and they go oh no i pay two action points and i move it back to my problem and now your card is exhausted so it's not gonna help during a face-off i don't know guys like i said before if you can think of a niche use for this like maybe put this in a deck with rally or something that's that's totally you, man, and you do you. Uh, MLP is all about accepting and friendship and all that nonsense, so I accept your decision to play a bad card. Cheese Sandwich bringing the party three for one power. Uh, this friend has plus one power for each of your Earth Ponies. Okay, 
Oh, and then at the beginning of each of your turns, you can pay one to put a one power earth pony in play. Yeah, so I was right. Pink is all about the tokens right now. Does anybody remember forever ago when I was doing MLP month and I actually made a deck around this idea called Cute Things Exploding where uh, you played yellow and pink together and then you just sort of exploded all of your critter friends to destroy your opponent's field? Well, now they're pretty much building pink towards something like that, but it builds its own tokens so you don't need to rely on yellow. That's really cool. I really enjoy this. I think I could really like playing pink in the new set. DJ Pawn 3, uh, foot the bill. Um, yes, no, it's, I know, it's it's feel the beat. It's three for three, and if you move a friend, you can pay one less for the next friend you put in play uh, to a minimum of one. If the to a minimum of one thing wasn't there, I would say this is a pretty decent card, but it's kind of fillery. Like, I see its use. I get it, but I'm not sure if I'm totally on board with it. The one legitimately cool thing I see about this card is if you're playing it in a deck that has a lot of movement already, like if you're playing Winged Wonder, for example, then this card saves you a lot of action tokens because it's not limited except for the fact that you have to pay at least one for a friend. So if you play Winged Wonder and you move three of your friends, your next friend is minus three action points. So um, that's playing a four cost character for one just from moving those three characters for free. So, I can see its uses, but it just requires so much setup that I don't know if I like it. I really don't think I do. I don't think I like this card, but it might have its niche uses. Lyra on a whim, 2 for 2, Eccentric 3. Um, I've never been a fan of Eccentric, ever. Uh, I think it's way too easy to break through, but if you like Eccentric, you do you. Party Mare, living it up, 1 for 1. Traveler and every single turn you move it to a random problem. See, this is a card I can get behind. This is a really good use of Traveler because every turn, no matter what, you're gonna move this at least once for free. So it starts off one for one, and then it's one for two, and then it's one for three, and it just keeps going up over and over and over again, and it's all free. Um, this card's pretty good. The whole being at a random problem thing is kind of a problem, I guess, but honestly, I think you can play around that. I think overall, of the cards with Traveler I've seen, this is probably one of my favorites. The 2 for 2 no color requirement Pinkie Pie. Uh, when you play, if you've got a pink, draw a card. That's pretty good, actually. Seahorse Pinkie, 4 for 4, Transform 2. Um, it has Hasty. I guess that's okay. I mean, I personally don't really see what benefit Hasty gives you here, but I mean, I can think of a few uses, I guess. Like, if you want to wait to play it and you want to see what your opponent does first, maybe you can just wait and watch your opponent play and then at the end of their turn, declare this, play it, and then put a card back in your hand and then do your stuff to make the play safer, I guess, but... um. I don't really like it that much. I think the pinky with 2-2 two, two and draw a card is a lot better than this. <laughs> oh my god, guys. It's the pinky sparkle surprise on one card. So pinky and twilight, 3-for-3, three 4-color three, requirement, eccentric 2, and when this card comes into play, you can replace a problem. That is surprisingly good. I know it doesn't seem that good at first, but actually being able to just flat out replace a problem is really nice because it takes off all of the uh, resources your opponent has piled on it, and it also gets rid of the troublemakers. So if there's a troublemaker you can't really deal with, honestly, you could just play this, pop that troublemaker, and then have a new problem in play, and the bonus is there too, I guess, if that's something you're going for. But honestly, just the power to just surprise your opponent by switching the problem is pretty good. I actually dig this card. Princess Sky Star, 4 for 2, you, um... But it has Transform 2, which makes up for it. Hasty and Eccentric 4. See, this actually makes sense. I understand why a card like this would have Hasty and Eccentric at the same time, because if your opponent is about to solve a problem, and your opponent has already moved on to the score phase, you can drop Princess Sky Star, so they're no longer solving that problem. That completely makes sense if a card has Hasty and Eccentric, and it's actually a good use of both. So. I like this card a little bit, even though I'm not a huge fan of Eccentric still, because in the score phase it's too late for your opponent to really do anything, but again we hit back to the problem of if your opponent 
is already solving it by at least four power, then this card is a dead card in your hand. Another Princess Sky Star, four for two. Um, oh, when this enters play, dismiss a friend. So it's essentially responsibility pie, but better, because it doesn't have to be a friend at that problem. I actually really like this in conjunction with the other card, because you play this, you dismiss a friend, and then during your opponent's turn, you go, oh, transform, hasty, uh, eccentric four, you're no longer solving this problem. And then next turn you go, by the way, Princess Sky Star, dismiss a friend. <laughs> and that's, that's cute. I like that. <laughs> Another Princess Sky Star, three for three, transform two, and when you put this card in play, you get a two power seashell token. I could honestly see Princess Sky Star being a pretty meme deck. So you essentially run both of the Princess Sky Stars who have Transform, along with the one that dismisses a friend, and you just pull shenanigans. <laughs> your opponent's turn hits around, you go, uh, hasty, eccentric, four. And then during your turn, you can go, by the way, I put that back in my hands, and I play this one, which gives me seashells. And then your opponent's turn comes around, and you go, and I transform it back into the one with hasty and eccentric, and then I play my four power, my four cost two power to dismiss a friend, and then I transform that one into seashell, and then I transform that one back over into the uh, <laughs> the eccentric hasty. Um, that that sounds like it could be pretty fun. I think Princess Sky Star could could stand for a a little bit of a, a little a little bit of a look if you're looking at a competitive pink. I haven't seen anything game winning yet, but. I definitely think this loop of just con constantly transforming your Princess Sky Stars could lead to something. See, Poppy, three for four, and as a random card is selected or choice is being made, call it, and if you call it right, you can exhaust this to score one victory point. Wow. Alright, so follow me on this, okay? So you build a deck with this, the Princess Sky Star line, and, uh,. Living Mare, not Living Mare, I'm dumb, uh, Party Mare, I think it's called, and every turn, like, your three Party Mares are just moving around randomly, and every time they do, you can exhaust this for some points. That sounds like a really fun little win condition. Like, it's like a stall strategy, but you're stalling long enough to get points. Like, pink-white with the strategy actually sounds like a lot of fun. I think this might be something I'll have to look into. Captain... Serendipity. Troublemakers here are played face up. That's okay, I guess, but I still don't understand what troublemakers you would want to play face up here. Um, there's got to be like a troublemaker in here that's going to completely change my mind about all of this, but I just don't understand it until I see a troublemaker that you would want to come into play face up. Princess Luna, Dusk to Dawn, 3 for 3, Meticulous 2. Eh, it's fine. A little fillery, but if you like Meticulous, then it's useful. Twilight, two for two. If you have a purple character in play, when you play this, you can move a friend. That's good. That's a good use of this effect. The Twilight Sea Pony is four for four with Meticulous two. Um, I'm actually surprised its effect doesn't involve lying or stealing something from your opponent. But I guess that's a discussion for another day. Spike Festival Assistant, uh, one for one power. Traveler. And every time this card moves, you can move one of your opponent's friends. This is what I'm talking about. This is awesome. So even if you just pay the two to move this, this gets a plus one counter. So one of the action tokens you're spending on moving this goes to that. One of the action tokens goes to moving this. And then pretty much as a free action, you get to move one of your opponent's characters, which is a really powerful ability. I think we finally hit a point where we've just completely phased out back where you began and um, can't decide. But again, this is another great example of a card with Traveler also doing something else. So I'd say like this and Party Mare are like up there as far as Travelers go. Spike, Puffer Up, 4 for 2 power, Trance 2, nice. Uh, opposing characters here get minus 1 power during face-offs. Eh. Um... And during the main phase, you can exhaust this to move one of your opponent's characters at this card's problem. Okay, so I get it. I see what this is supposed to do. I think it's a little bit weak. I don't know if I'm super into it. It's a critter, which is interesting, but I really don't know if I would play this in anything outside of, like, 
maybe a troublemaker control deck because you could put this behind a troublemaker and your opponent's characters all lose power when they're trying to tr uh, challenge that troublemaker and then just kind of send one of them home every turn which does sound pretty annoying i'll give it to you but uh other than that i i don't know it doesn't seem that great starlight glimmer three for three and when you play an event you can exhaust this plus your other unicorn friends up to the total cost of the event card that you played and uh just double its effect which is pretty interesting there are lots of purple events that you would want to double so this is pretty decent it, having to exhaust all your duders i don't know if that's necessarily worth it especially now that twilight's an alicorn and not a unicorn anymore but i mean i don't know i can definitely see its uses storm king conniver four for four and if you move a character you can exhaust this card to gain action points if you exhausted this to move one of your friends you get one but if you exhaust it when you move one of your opponent's friends you get two i mean what can i say except this with spike festival assistant and you've got yourself a pretty beefy duo right there because either you're paying two to move a character and you're uh, getting the two back so you get just free movement for absolutely nothing or if you have swift then you are moving a character getting that for free or even better you can move a character for free and uh have one of your opponent move one of their characters and then just get the two action points for absolutely nothing and actually be gaining off of it like if you were to play something like back where you began which costs one action token to move one of your opponent's characters and then on top of that, you just exhausted this to get two action points, you would actually be gaining one action point off of the transaction. So it's interesting. Um, I think this is something you would have to build around, but I do think it's a very interesting ability that can get you a lot of uh, action point value off of your plays. You know where I'd really like this, actually? The, um, the Twilight Sparkle and Octavia control deck, or like Tickets, Please? I think that would be a really great place for this. Oh yes, a Trixie card. Three for three. Ugh, Eccentric two. No, no, Trixie, no. Uh, when you play an event, you can give a character plus two or a Troublemaker plus two. Uh, yay, it's, it's my two favorite effects. Temporary power boosts and Eccentric. Uh, 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 I mean, it's not awful especially if you're running like a troublemaker control deck i can see its uses i get it okay i can see its uses clearly but i'm not a fan of it personally oh man we still have a hundred cards to go oh oh mistakes were made today <laughs> so uh what's your name uh beauty brass four for four showy one uh decent filler Ooh, good old Capper Dapper Paws, uh, two for two. Opponents can't move characters during the score phase, um, so I guess goodbye truly outrageous rarity. Uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot of other cards that do that, except maybe, I guess Beastmaster Fluttershy also applies here. It just doesn't seem like a common enough problem for this card to exist, but if this is the problem you're facing, here you go. Another cap two for two four color requirement this card's power is doubled for each troublemaker here mm. so on the surface that's really awful actually but there are a couple of things you could do with this here so first of all any power boosts you give this are going to be doubled too so if you give this something that gives it like plus two power then it's actually plus four power plus you can have a face down troublemaker at a problem with a face up troublemaker and this doesn't specify face up troublemakers so you could have a face up troublemaker and a face down troublemaker to double it once to four and then once again to eight i i again i get it i completely understand what they were going for here but it just seems so oddly niche i don't know if i like it personally but I mean, if that intrigues you, then this will work. Go for it. Photo finish, two for one at the end of each opponent's turn. If that opponent did not move any characters this turn, you may retire this to banish an opponent's friend. That sounds more like mind games than an actual good card. <laughs> like, you play this while your opponent has a good character on board, and then every turn you just stare at your opponent's field like, oh, 
Uh, do you want to move something? You don't want to move something? Ah, uh, um, just kind of put your hand on photo finish like, eh, eh, don't forget. Don't forget, you got to move something. Like if you're doing something that restricts how many action points your opponent has, like if you're running a uh, <coughs> certain uneven groundy kind of individual, then I could see this being really annoying because it's like you have Rainbow Dash on even ground and you have this and like <laughs> your opponent only has like three action points for the turn and you just kind of eyeball photo finish like, oh, are you going to move something? That's gonna cost you two action points, but if you don't move something, I'm I'm I'ma kill it. I'ma kill that thing right there and you point to their best card, so I don't know. Honestly, this really doesn't sound like a great card, but it does sound like it could be pretty funny mind games. Princess Cadence, is Princess Cadence really still a thing? Uh Royal Envoy two for two Traveler, nice. Exhaust this card and remove two plus one counters on it. To put a card from your discard pile back in your hand, god dang, Princess Cadence. All right, hear me out on this, okay? All right, I'm really excited. So Princess Cadence, with the orange card that gives you plus one power counter every turn, with Ooza sized. What do you think, guys? What do you think? I'm thinking tier one deck. Queen Novo under the sea with five for five. Uh, when you play a sea pony, wait, are they really called sea ponies? <laughs> I was actually just making fun of them when I was calling them sea ponies. I didn't know they were actually legitimately called sea ponies. Nice. So you need minus two colorless to confront this card's problem until the end of the turn. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty underwhelming. Your sea ponies have showy one? Okay, um... Wow. Wow, yeah, no, that's not worth it. <laughs> there are so many better ways to run a showy deck. Uh, I guess if you really like the sea ponies, you could make this work, but I'm not going to do it. Rarity, 2-2, two, two, no color requirement. Uh, if you play this while you have a white friend in play, then you get plus two power till the end of the turn, or you give a character plus two power till the end of the turn. Um, okay, great. I'm always a fan of white power. White power is pretty awesome. Sea Pony Rarity, 4-4, four, four, Trance 2, Showy 1, and, uh, I mean, this is pretty neat. Showy is always a really nice ability to have because it stops your opponent from being able to swarm uh, one of your problems. And, I mean, when you put your other Rarity in your hand, you can play it again and uh, give another card more white powers. So, yeah, I mean, white power is pretty amazing. Can I get a quick round of applause for white power, everybody? So, if you actually clapped for white power... Yo, racist. Brian, once well guy. Bubble Buddy, hey, you're back. I talked about this card in one of my other videos. Uh, this card's amazing. <laughs> one for one power. It has a chaos effect that lets you put it in play if it's flipped. It's a critter, and if one of your other friends would be dismissed, banished, or moved, you can just get rid of this card instead. So it's like a one-turn shield for any of your opponent's control effects, which is amazing. It doesn't protect against kicking things back into the hands, but, I mean, other than that, it pretty much protects against everything. And during your main phase, you can retire this to dismiss one of your opponent's resources, so... This card can pretty much do anything. Definitely a three of in yellow decks. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Canterlot Citizens, two for two. Uh, start of your score phase, you can exhaust this to use its power to help confront a problem. Uh, and it doesn't count towards your home limit. It's nice if your opponent is running a deck with lots of like move control I guess but other than that I really don't see much of a use for this card I, I would really rather just run a critter over this like if this were a critter I could almost understand like if it was like a herd of bunnies or something but like just as an ally card I really don't think I like it at all Canterlot Shopkeep, 3 for 3, Traveler, and when you move this card, you can put a plus 1 counter on one of your friends with 2 or less power. Oh, I really wish it were 2 or less printed power, so that you could make uh, something small really, really big over and over again. As it stands, this is okay, as long as you can guarantee this has a target every time this moves. Um, not great, but definitely not a bad card. Fluttershy, two for two, no color requirement. Uh, if you have another yellow friend when this character hits play, you can return one of your opponent's two or less power characters to their hand. Ooh, uh, that's not good. There's really, mm, 
There's so many times where this card could be dead, because you don't always want to return stuff to your opponent's hands, even though it is kind of annoying, I guess, if you're returning, like, tokens that just disappear, or if you're returning something that doesn't have an on-play effect, like, it's kind of annoying having to play it again, but... I mean, two or less doesn't hit a lot of things, unless you're fighting against, like, purple and you're trying to get rid of their, um, cover-to-covers, but... I mean, other than that, like, if you accidentally return something with a great on-play effect, or if your opponent just doesn't have anything you want to return, then this is kind of a dead card. I mean, this is really the only one of these, um, two-for-two two, no-color requirement cards that I've seen so far that could legitimately just not have an effect in your hand. Not good. Not good at all. Sea Pony Fluttershy, Trance 2, Calming 2, eh, 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 really not a fan of it. I can see its use, uh, Calming 2 is kind of okay, I guess, uh, because it stops your opponent's plays for one turn, but I don't know, I'm not a fan of it personally, um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you do like the Calming strategy thing where you're just, like, I, I get what they were going for, okay, I totally get it. You bounce something with Fluttershy, and then you play Sea Pony over it, and then <laughs> pretty much when your opponent plays the card that they just put back in their hand, it'll have zero power because it had two or less power, and now when they play it again, it loses both of those power points, I guess, but then it just plays it on the other problem, or it just plays a different card, or I don't know. I'm really not a fan of this, but if you like it, that's all you. Gummy, Lap Gator, one for one. Oh, Critter! A Critter? In yellow? No, you don't say. <laughs> I was I was sure they got rid of Critters here in, in Sequestria because I've been seeing so little of them. Uh, when you move a character, you can put this card from your hand into play. That's potentially really, really, really good. Um, if you've got something like, what is it called? Critter Cuisine, I think? where all of your critters get plus one power while in play, then this is one for two... No, this is zero. It's zero for two power, because it comes into play for free when you move something. Um, I mean, with all the traveling going around, it seems pretty great. It doesn't say it has to meet color requirements either, so I don't even know why the two yellow color requirement is there. So, yeah, I, especially if you're running a strategy, like I said before, where you're running a deck with pink, and you're sacking off your own characters to get effects, then you just move something and you put Gummy in play and it's cannon fodder for one of your other effects, which is, which actually makes the look on Gummy's face really hilarious. But yeah, honestly, I think this is a pretty great card. Jonah Gold, delightful. Three for three, uh, card enters play, all your duders get plus one power until the end of the turn. I could see that being good. That's pretty decent. Three for three power and um, all of your characters get plus one power for the, for the entire turn. That's pretty good. Um, definitely not a game-winning card, definitely something I would only splash into a deck and I wouldn't build a complete deck around, but if you're building a swarm deck or a deck with a lot of tokens, I could see this being useful. Peachy Sweet, Persistent, 4 for 4, um, eh, it's okay. It's filler, it's definitely filler, but it's okay. Princess Celestia, Day Shift, 2 for 2, uh, when a problem enters play, you may move one of your characters at home to that problem, nice. This is really good, I really like this. Um, when the problems switch, you can just move one of your characters from home onto a problem. If it has Traveler, then it gets its plus one token. If you're moving something like Spike, then its Traveler effect goes off. If you're moving something like Mare, then it gets its plus one and it can move to a random... I don't know. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if you're running this in a deck that has Traveler, then I think this is a really great way to get yourself some tokens. Don't forget you can also run stuff like uh, Twilight Pinky, which automatically swaps a problem, so uh, really I don't see a problem with this card. I think it's really good. Sequestria Citizens 2 for 2. While this card is at home, it has Swift. Ugh. Ugh. Filler if I've ever seen it. Next. So, on to the double colors. Uh, Applejack Pony Pirate is a blue and an orange. Cool. 3 for 4. And when this card enters play, you can challenge a troublemaker with it, and you flip an additional card during face-offs involving this card. So nice! Um, this can potentially kill a troublemaker on play, and if you're farming villains, then I guess you could use this to kill one of your villains. On top of being a natural 4 power, it also flips two cards, so, I mean, great. If you're running a deck with orange in it, you're probably gonna win. First Mate Mullet, 
two for two, and it's also blue-orange. Huh, interesting. So, stubborn, nice, and as an immediate, you can pay one and exhaust this card to move one of your characters. Oh, that's really good. I really like that. That's nice. Uh, travel effect goes off. It's a pirate, so everything about this is good. Uh, the thing that makes that so good, by the way, is the fact that it has immediate. Like, if it was just you could do it during your main phase, it'd be okay, but the fact that it's an immediate so you can do it during your opponent's turn is what makes it so good. Um, when another... Wait a second. When another one of your pirate friends enters play, you may ready this card. Oh boy. That that is some shenanigans right there. I really like this. I like this idea of the pirate deck. Um, there's just so much synergy going on right now. I really like this. It has stubborn, so you can exhaust it for its effect and still use its power during face-offs and stuff. Um, when another one of your pirate friends enters play, you can just continuously use its effect over and over again to move your duders out if you don't have pirate crew in play, in play already, so overall a great card. I like it. Pinkie Pie, Pony Pirate, and I think it's great because I can just call her Pinkie Pirate. I hope she's a good card so I can continue using that joke. So Pinkie Pirate is 3 for 3 in its blue-pink. I'm guessing just all of the, um, <laughs> I'm guessing just all of the pirates are going to be blue, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, competitive three, nice, very good. Card enters play, you can draw a card. Okay, I'm with you so far. Uh, when you win a face-off involving this card, you may draw a card and discard a card. Nice, so you get to draw a card on play, it gets plus three during face-offs, and on top of all of that, when you do win a face-off, you can draw a card and discard a card, and that involves Troublemaker face-offs. So everything about this is pretty good, I like it. Um, especially with the competitive three, if you're still running the old um, showdown cards, you can show down this with another three power card. This gets plus three on top of its regular, so it's actually dwarfing your opponent in power. And if you win the face off, you can cycle a card. Overall, a pretty good, a pretty good card. Pretty good card, Pinkie Pirate. Pretty good. Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie, three for two, blue pink. Chaotic, when this is flipped, move a character to a random problem? Eh. Eh. Kind of gross. Swift. Okay. When this card enters play, you may move up to three characters to random problems? Um... Not a fan. I feel like it's not that efficient. Yeah, that, I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't feel like it's very efficient. If you like it, that's great, but I feel like it's pretty weak. Twilight Sparkle Pony Pirate, ooh, ooh, that is, uh, wow, you are really rocking that hat right now, Twilight. Um, four for two? Gross. Uh, your effect better make up for it. So it's four for two, uh, blue, purple, as you can imagine. When you play this card, you may frighten another friend here. Wow, that is really underwhelming. <laughs> I'm really disappointed. I could be wearing a hat that cool and not have a good effect. Um, honestly, four for two, just to frighten a friend is not good. <laughs> I mean, I guess it works kind of because it's like a pirate and it, and it fits with the whole like pirate thing, but honestly, if I had to kick out one pirate so far, it would be Twilight, as much as it hurts me to say. Twilight and Spike, or I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. Uh, Duck Face Twilight and Serious Spike, three for three, blue, purple. Uh, as an immediate, you can pay two and exhaust this card to move one of your characters and one of your opponent's characters. Very interesting. That is, huh. I think I love that effect. Because you pay two, you move one of your characters with Traveler, so you get the Traveler effect plus the plus one pops off. And then you move one of your opponent's characters away from where you just moved your Traveler character, so your opponent has to move that character again. You can also do it on play, so if your opponent plays a character to a problem, you pay the two, exhaust this, move that character back home, and then move one of your Travelers up. Huh. Okay, yeah, I'm down with this. I'm really down with this. That's a good effect. Parish Nandermare, two for two, blue, white, swift. Uh, opponents pay plus one to play cards during face-offs involving this card. What a specific effect. So, plus one on belly flops, plus one on yays, plus one on critter cavalry. Um, 
Am I missing anything? Uh, plus one on whatever purple has up its sleeve, I guess. It's very specific, but I mean, I guess if you're fighting something that specifically goes along that theme, it's an okay card for it. Rarity Pirate, three for two, blue, white. When you confront this card's problem, you may, <laughs> oh my gosh, you may retire this card to score two points. So they're trying to phase out Truly Outrageous. I think they're finally really paying attention to it. Nice. So, I mean, uh, let me think for a second. So this is pretty good because it's not limited by the amount of bonus points on a problem, which means you'll never get three, but you'll never get less than two. And you can kill it off, get two, and then there's so many cards in the set that let you recycle cards. So I'm thinking the idea here is you play a deck with this and um, the character that lets you pay two, uh, two counters to get a card from your discard pile back. Which card was it? Was it Luna? Crap, I really, I, I can't remember. Cadence. It was Princess Cadence. So you partner this up with Cadence, and you can guarantee yourself two victory points a turn, which is nice. That's pretty good. Um, kind of a slow way to win. I guess if you partner that up with, like, a photo finish to get points, and, uh, yeah, I, I could see a really annoying win condition being put around this. Maybe, uh, what's her name? Captain, um... Captain Celery Stick. Captain Celery Stick with this would be a pretty interesting little win condition deck. Overall, not bad. At least a good attempt at trying to phase out Truly Outrageous. Fluttershy Pirate. Blue, yellow, two for two. Swift, nice. Uh, oh my god. Angel's got a little eye patch on. Ooh, so sassy. When this card enters play, troublemakers don't prevent you from... <laughs> Don't prevent you from confronting problems until the end of the turn. Nice. What a meme. That means if you can play this on a turn where you're going to initiate a double face-off, then you can flip both problems and get rid of the troublemakers. Just completely clear the board of troublemakers for the turn. Nice. Uh, really good way to screw over your opponent if your opponent's relying on troublemakers to uh, stop you from confronting problems. Really interesting idea. I mean, you do have to have enough power to confront both problems for that little strategy to work, but I mean, if that's what's stopping you from winning, then this stops that from stopping you, so good. Shoe Shine, Animal Sanctuary. One for one, blue, yellow, yada yada. That is a really high color requirement. Traveler, okay. Immediate, retire another one of your friends to move this cart. Oh, nice, cool, awesome. So this is another card that works with the whole cute things exploding thing. I, it's not pink, which kind of sucks, but I mean, if you're playing a yellow deck that's getting a lot of tokens, then you can just sack all of your tokens to traveler this up, baby. Uh, when you win a face-off involving this card, you may put a one-power critter token into play. Oh, that's adorable. So every time you win a face-off with this card, you put a token into play, you sack the token to give this free movement, and its traveler goes up. Not the best Traveler I've seen, but if you're using a Critter deck anyways, this is a pretty good one, I guess. Backup Dancers, Orange Pink, uh, three for three. When this card enters play, put two One Power Earth Pony Friend tokens into play. Uh, then exhaust an opposing character for each of your characters. Nice. <laughs> what a meme. What a meme. It's certainly a fine card. It's not gonna win you the match, but it can certainly slow your opponent down a bit. You drop this, you initiate a double face-off, and none of your opponent's <laughs> characters gets to compete in the face-off. That's, that's pretty funny. I like that. Haven Bay. Orange, pink, one for one. Uh, Traveler, nice. Stubborn, nice. When you put a plus one counter on this card, you may exhaust it to draw a card. So it can potentially get you a card draw every turn. And it has stubborn, so honestly, you don't have to worry about it not contributing its powers, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just draw a card every single time you um, put a counter on this and it's not exhausted already. That's good. I, I like that. That's okay. Applejack and Twilight, four, orange, purple, mm, meticulous one, and you flip an additional card during Troublemaker face-offs. 
very specific. Uh, I don't know if I quite agree with something as specific as this, but I mean, if that's what you want, it exists, I guess. Licks, oh gosh darn it, another lick spittle. Oh, that's so gross. Four for two, orange, purple, prepared. Uh, your troublemakers have plus one power for each event in your discard pile. Okay, licks, you, you can stay, dude. You can you can licks all the spittle you want. Yeah, that that's a pretty good effect. So, essentially, if you've played five events, then your troublemaker here has plus five power. Uh, if you're if you're relying on troublemakers to win you the game, then that's pretty darn good. Um, plus, it has prepared, so if your opponent starts a face-off here, you just get one action point off the bat. Okay, yeah, I could see this. Um, it's really easy right now to get rid of troublemakers, it seems, but overall, like, it, it seems like an okay idea. Applejack and Rarity, three for two, only one color requirement for orange and white, nice. Uh, Diligent one, that's okay. While an opponent has more friends than you, this card's power is doubled. Whoa, four power? That's crazy. Uh, no, I, I get it. I get what they're going for here, because any of the power boosts this gets gets doubled too. So, for example, if you play the rarity that gives us plus two power for the turn, it becomes four. Doubled becomes eight. That's okay, especially with diligent, because... Um, like, each of your Diligent tokens are essentially going to count for two as long as your opponent has more friends than you do, but... I mean, it really depends on how many more friends your opponent has than you. If your opponent's beating you by, like, five friends, this probably isn't going to make a difference, but... It's okay. Jamal Seaweed Wrap. Four for four. It's orange and white. Showy one. When an opponent moves or plays a character to this card's problem, you may exhaust that character. Ooh. Ooh. Jamal. You might be a surprisingly decent card in this format. Because if your opponent's trying to build up Traveler tokens or something, you just kind of exhaust it. So it at least doesn't get its power for the turn. I mean, it doesn't stop it from moving around and getting a whole bunch of Traveler off, but... I mean, it's okay. If you're running orange-white anyway, I mean, you might as well tech this in it too. Applejack and Fluttershy. One for one with a one color requirement from each. Uh, when a problem is solved, if one or more of your friends with two or less printed power would be sent home, they aren't sent home instead? Oh, oh god, oh, oh, it's so beautiful, it's just, it's amazing. Alright, so let me break this card down for anybody who doesn't understand why this card puts me in tears with how amazing it is. Printed power two or less means that you can pump your friends up as high as you want them to be without them losing this effect. If you build a deck around this effect and all of your friends have two or less printed power, then essentially what this means is you can rush your opponent down, initiate a double face-off, and then after the double face-off, send all of your opponent's friends home and move none of your friends home. Every single one of your friends stays at the problems they're at. And then when it comes back around to your turn again, double face off, move all of your opponent's friends home, get the action points. This is insane. This actually is a win condition. This is so good because what it does essentially for, for one action point, keep in mind, for one action point, every single turn you can do a double face off without spending any of your action points to move your friends to problems. I mean, is that sinking in for anybody? Is everybody on the same page here with why this is amazing? I think this is really cool. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, metagame shifts might make this not great. Like, um, this might not be the most competitive strategy out there. But I'm telling you, if you were to build a deck specifically to take advantage of this effect, then I think you would have a pretty powerful deck. And from what I can see, it's in Uncommon. This card might actually be cancer. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it be in play and uh rushdown decks just aren't really a thing right now, especially with Traveler floating around. I'm sure your opponent can just play around this, but in my personal opinion, of all the cards I've seen, I think this is the one that most excites me about building a deck. Double face off every turn, guarantee two points plus the bonus points every turn, move all of your opponent's friends home every turn. All for a one action point card your opponent has to deal with. Okay, if your opponent lets this stay in play, 
then they're a fool. And even if, all right, let's say hypothetically your opponent does play something like a Tom to get rid of this card, the damage is done. See, that's the problem with cards like this in uneven ground Rainbow Dash is that once their effect goes off one time, the damage is done. Uh, this card comes in play, you initiate a double face off, um, you get the two points for solving the problems, you get the bonus points, you send all of your opponent's friends home, your friends stay on the problem. Then during their turn, when they do pay to get rid of this card, your one action point card that they have to pay three or four action points to get rid of, mind you, then when it comes back to your turn, you can just do it again? <laughs> Like, not even with this card in play, but even when this card isn't in play, that this guarantees you at least two guaranteed double face-offs that your opponent has to deal with, which is a minimum of five points each, and, um, no, I'm sorry, which is a minimum of five points altogether, because, uh, two, no, six, it's a minimum of six points altogether, because you get two from solving, and then at least one bonus point, and if you build a deck around this, and you build a deck that uses three three victory point cards then essentially what you could potentially do is build a deck where you use a bunch of three bonus point cards and you initiate a double face off with this card in play the first double face off will get you two points plus three so that's five and then if your opponent gets rid of this card on the next turn you initiate the double face off again without spending any action points, mind you, to move your characters. And you'll probably win because you had to move all of your opponent's characters home. And that is another five. So that's ten action points in those two turns. That this is insane. Alright. The the theory crafting behind this card is just insane. Okay, I know I'm spending like forever on this one card, but I want to say one more thing about it. Alright. Uh, I know one of the arguments against this is going to be, oh, but Kudo, what if you're not strong enough to win the face-off? Then you're just giving your opponent a bunch of bonus points. No, you're not. No, you're not, and that's the trick. See, even if you lose, then your opponent still has to move everything home, and you still got two victory points and didn't have to move anything home. So even the absolute worst case scenario of you not being able to win the face-off no matter what, and your opponent having a way to remove this during their turn, like absolute worst case scenario possible, for one action token you still get a guaranteed at least four, four victory points and you don't have to move stuff home and your opponent does. As soon as this card hits the board, your opponent has to do something about it or they're pretty much on a timer and they're going to lose within the next three or four turns. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'll stop, okay? I'll, I'll get off of this card. We still have like 50 more cards to look at, but I just want to let you guys know that this card is uh, has the potential to be really, really cancerous if it works the way that it's working in my head right now. Sea Pony Duo Flipper Floppers. Oh, it's adorable. Uh, two for two, orange, yellow. Flip an additional card during face offs involving this card. Nice. Opponents flip one fewer cards during face offs involving this card. Whoa, what a meme. So essentially, you flip two cards, your opponent flips zero cards in most cases. I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> That's okay. Selena Blue, pink, purple, two for two, eccentric two. And immediate exhaust this card to draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your deck. So holy crap, this card is amazing. If you're going into a face-up, you can use this right before you flip your cards to make sure that you have a high-powered card on top of your deck. Or, if you're using chaos effects, you can make sure that there's a chaos card on top of your deck so its effect goes off. And since it's an immediate, you can use it whenever you want to. So if you want to wait and see what your opponent does, then you just wait, let them play through their turn, and if they go through their turn without initiating a face-off or forcing you to put something on top of your deck, then all you have to do is say, during the end phase, I'm going to exhaust, use the effect to draw three, put two on top, and then once their turn is officially over, you draw one and you have it ready to do it again. Overall, a pretty amazing and versatile card. I would definitely put this in any pink-purple deck that I ran. Temper Tantrum and Grubber. Four for four, three pink and three purple color requirements. Hasty. When this card enters play, you may put an opposing friend on top of its owner's deck. Nice. So if you use this to get rid of something that has a pretty low power count, then 
pretty much you just put it on top of their deck and if they are going to go into a face off then they're going to flip into a really weak card that is going to go to the bottom of their deck so honestly that's a really good way to get rid of it it doesn't increase their hand advantage it doesn't put it somewhere where they can play it again and if you play it correctly then you can get rid of the card before your opponent even gets a chance to draw it again not bad removal honestly i mean pink purple came out pretty good with these dual color cards bodyguard it's <laughs> it's a black pony with an afro oh man that's racist so it's two pink white two power when a non-token friend leaves play, you may put a one power white unicorn token into play with prepared. Nice. Main phase. Exhaust this card and retire a friend to look at the top card of a problem deck and put it on top or bottom of the deck. Okay, second effect is pretty underwhelming, but Jesus. <laughs> Every time a pony leaves play, and this is white pink, okay, the banisher queen rarity and the dismissal friends... Pinkie Pie in one set. So every time you get rid of one of your opponent's non-token characters, uh, you get yourself a one power token in play. And then you can spend those tokens on the pink effects that we were talking about earlier. This is legitimately a really cool card. Pinky Rarity, Pink White, Eccentric 2. When an opposing character is moved, you may pay one and exhaust this card to send that character to its previous area. Okay, interesting. Um, so, I mean, there is going to be a lot of movement with travelers sort of uh, hanging around. Uh, I really don't... Mm, this is fine. I like this. It's okay. It's not the best, but it's okay. Especially if you're running something that uh, punishes your opponent from moving. Like, if you're using a lot of showy, or if you're using... I was going to say purple, but I guess you wouldn't be running purple here. I don't know. In a showy deck, it sounds okay, but other than that, it sounds a little too situational. Pinky Sky Star, three for three. Pinky Yellow, Hasty, and when this card enters play, you may put an opposing friend into its owner's hand. See, that's less good. I'd really rather move it to the top of the deck. I think moving it to the hand is a little bit eh. Um, plus, you could... Oh my gosh, I don't know, dude. You could Tom... And it's much more effective than this. The only thing this card has going for it is it has hasty, so you can do it during your opponent's turn, but really it's just going to delay them for one turn. I don't know if I like this that much. I think Tom is a much better card than this. Chelly and Sheldon, happy as clams. Two for three. It's pink and yellow. Eccentric three. Swift. This card can't contribute its power to face-offs. Any face-offs? No troublemaker face-offs? No double face-offs? Uh, I mean, I really hate to tell you guys, but the Eccentric's not worth it if they can't contribute their power to face-offs. Okay, no, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this card at all. What is that, Kluge Town Vendor? Was the place they were in really called Kluge Town? Kluge Town? I don't know, dude. I really don't know. Three for three, it's purple and white. Showy one, when an opponent challenges one of your troublemakers, you may move an opponent's character. Ooh. Oh, that's not bad for a troublemaker control deck. Ah, ah, I like that. Yes, yes, I like that. That's good. That's, that's, that's good. I'd like it more if it was like your opponent challenges a troublemaker because, you know, if your opponent's over there villain farming, then this could be a pretty decent counter to it because... Your opponent challenges with their Applejack, and you just move their Applejack away so it can't win the face-off? That sounds good, but whatever. You know, I'll take what I can get. Octavia, Harmony, and Dissonance? You know, I'd swear they used that picture before. Huh. I really feel like they reused that picture from somewhere, but then again, I guess this is from the movie, so that's not really possible. Maybe they just reused the pose? I, guess? I don't know, dude. I don't know. Octavia, Harmony, and Dissonance. Three for three, it's pink, uh, not pink, sorry, it's purple and white. Uh, meticulous one, as an opponent plays an event, you can pay two action points and exhaust this card to cancel that card. Whoa, nice. Whoa, that's really good. So, I mean, you can choose when to use this. So if, when your opponent plays an event, they have to ask your permission to play it. <laughs> that's great. And they have to pay for the event first. So your opponent pays like four action points for an event and shows it to you and says, hey, Hey, can I, can I play this? Is this okay? 
And then you can say yes and let it go through, or you can pay two action points and exhaust this and say no, and they just don't get to play it, and it's discarded. <laughs> nice. I like this card a lot. Twilight and Fluttershy, uh, two for two, yellow purple. Hey, that was my first deck ever. Um, Meticulous two, and when you put one or more cards on top of your deck, you can exhaust this to put a one power critter token into play. That's okay. I like that. Um, I mean, that's essentially free critters. You could run this with Zakora or um, what's her face? Blue, and uh, put stuff on top of your deck and get free critters all over the field. That sounds decent, I guess. I think it's a little bit underwhelming, but uh, I mean, if you're already running purple and yellow and you really want to run Zakora, then I think this is okay. Actually, you know what? I'm sitting here talking about Zakora, but I just realized this has Meticulous, so never mind. Uh, it's a one card combo. Um, it's pretty good, because you can just Meticulous every turn and uh, get a free token out of it. Okay, let's just leave it at that. You Meticulous, and then you get a token out of it. Twilight and Tempest, yellow, purple, four for four. Prepared, nice. Your characters and troublemakers here have plus one power. Eh, little underwhelming. Uh, I'm really not that impressed by it, but I guess it's something. Critter Choir, four for two, white and yellow. When this card enters play, put two, two one-power critter tokens into play. Then each of your characters get plus two power till the end of the turn. Nice. What a meme. This is a good card. I like this. I like this a lot. And it's also a critter on its own. <laughs> that, that's good. That's good. I like it. No, keep it. Keep it. It's a good card. The last of our friends, ladies and gentlemen, Fluttershy and Sea Poppy, three for three, white, yellow, coming two. When you confront this card's problem, you may put a critter friend with two or less cost from your discard pile into play. That's decent. I like that. That's, uh, it's a little restrictive, but it's still okay, especially if you're recycling uh, your critters, I guess. It's fine. It's not great. It's not bad. It's just okay. I lied. We have colorless friends. <laughs> so, uh, something town citizen, three for four. Nice. Uh, main phase, discard a friend to give this card the discarded card's color till the end of the turn. Nice. It's a color fixer. Cool. So, three, you get four power in play, and then you can choose what color it is by discarding a card. In most other card games, that would be a really high cost, but since you can just pay one action token to draw a card, you can really just make up for the discarded card by paying one action token, so that's okay. That's a really good color fixer. I like it. The main six, two for two, also colorless, with Traveler. Nice. And you can remove a plus one counter from this card to choose a color. This card gains that color until the end of the turn. Okay, this is much better than the other card, in my opinion. Uh, wow, that's, that's really cool. So... It has Traveler, you can pay it, uh, you can play it for just two, and then, you know, if you ever get a chance to move it, then you move it, and you get the, uh, you get the plus one token, you give up the plus one token, and that's, uh, that's whatever color you want it to be to fix your colors. I guess the other one does have its applications. I don't know, you know, honestly, I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I really can't tell which one is supposed to be better. Um, this one seems like it's a lot more versatile. And it seems like it has more application towards the actual game because it has Traveler. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'd say if your deck has some kind of movement that will give this Swift or uh, let this move around the board really easily, then this is better. But if your deck doesn't have something like that, like if you're just running orange or something, then the other one's probably better. Okay, events for reals, these guys. Uh, first off, Betrayed, one cost, two purple color requirement, and spoilers, jeez. Uh, Frightening Friends, nice. <laughs> what a meme. I mean, it's essentially the back where you began of Frightening Friends. I like it. Burning Bridges, three, three color requirement. Uh, move up to two opposing characters as an immediate. That's pretty okay, too. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I feel like three is a little bit costly for something like this. Two would have been much better, but it's there. Cornered, one with three white color requirement. Uh, each player chooses up to three of their friends and retires the rest. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's pretty much a token destroyer. If you're running a deck with tokens in it, then white is your counter, I guess. I mean, I could see this beating out yellow, 
pink, purple. Man, that's that's really harsh. Oh my gosh. Uh, this might be a pretty legit counter to a lot of the strategies that I would run. I mean, it's not super harsh. You get to keep your three best characters, but uh, that could screw over some people. Nice. Deep Trouble, four, two blue requirement. Frighten up to two friends. Whoa. Ooh, all of the all of the frightening that's going on. It's uh, frighteningly good. Follow my lead. One to white requirement. Main phase. Give a character plus two power until the end of the turn. When you move a character, you may put this card from your hand in wait into your hand from your discard pile. So nice. Okay. At only one cost, this is actually pretty darn good. I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, it's just. Pay one, give somebody plus two power, and then this recycles itself every single time you move a character. So, not bad. Uh, we're up in the epiphanies. It's no longer two colors, guys. It's three. So, two for... Oh my gosh. Two for orange, purple, and white. Choose one. Put the top five cards of a player's deck into that player's discard pile. Oh my gosh. That's, uh, that's mill. Is Mill, like, still around as a strategy? That's crazy. Um, banish an opposing friend, or search your deck for a troublemaker and put it into play face up. I We gotta hit those troublemakers, man. I wanna know what troublemaker it is that has such a great face up effect. So not bad. Uh, for only two action points, having six power is kind of ridiculous, and like obviously this would have to be pretty good because uh, it has such a beefy color requirement. Next song is It's Time to Be Awesome, two cost, uh, blue, pink, and yellow. Choose one, challenge an opposing troublemaker, okay, until the end, wait a second, uh, with all of your characters in play, nice. So you get to challenge a troublemaker with literally everything you have, cool. Uh, dismiss an opponent's friends, that's decent. Or your characters get plus two power until the end of the turn. Again, this is very versatile, I could see all of those being useful at different times. Um, maybe not so much the challenge or troublemaker one, but then again, you get to challenge it with literally everything you have in play, so that could be good. Pony power, two for three blue. Well, this... wait a second. While this card is flipped, your characters involved in the face-off have plus one power until the end of the face-off. What a meme. Uh, challenge an opposing troublemaker with all of your characters at its problem. Your characters involved in the face-off have plus one power until the end of the face-off. So... I mean, blue just has a card that says you win, so I don't know. I think Epic Win is probably the card I would run if I just really needed to get rid of Troublemakers, but I guess this is okay too. This card also takes into account things that give you bonuses during face-offs, like you get pumped, you get uh, characters that have like face-off only effects, so I guess it's okay for that. Sponge cake break? Oh yeah, Grubber had a like uh, a cake thing, right? That was that was his thing. Yeah, okay, all right, okay. Three for three orange and immediate. Put two plus one counters on one of your friends, then exhaust an opposing character with less power than that friend. That's a little expensive for that kind of effect, I think. I mean, you get two power out of it and you exhaust a character. I don't really think that's worth it. They could have at least upped the power to five if they were going to do that. So. Eh. Getting into some dilemmas. Blue's dilemma is if one or more of your characters would be sent home from here, you may send those characters to other problems instead. Okay, cool. That's pretty much anti-purple. Nice. Yellow's is corralling critters. Uh, when you move a character to this problem, you can pay one to put a one power critter token into play. Alrighty, not bad. White is delaying tactics. At the end of your turn, you may put a delay counter on a problem. Opponents pay plus one to move characters to a problem for each delay counter on that problem. Uh, when an opponent moves a character to a problem, remove all delay counters from that problem. Cool. So it's like showy, but it increases every single turn until your opponent finally moves something there to get rid of all of the, uh, all the delay tokens. That's not bad. I actually don't mind that at all. That's a pretty good one. Pink's friendship festival setup. Uh, when this problem is replaced, put five one power earth pony tokens into play. Nice. So as soon as you do a double face off, or as soon as you have a face off here and this problem goes away, you just get five one power ponies in play. That's really cool. 
Purples is gods, gods! Oh, when you move a character to this problem, your troublemakers get plus two power until the end of your next turn? Whoa, what a meme. And finally, orange has protect the princess. You flip an additional card during face-offs. Little bit underwhelming, but I could see where it would be useful. On to regular resources. Desert Road 3 for 4 orange. Play to your home. As an opposing friend enters play, it loses and can't have abilities until the end of the turn. That's really good. That actually cancels out every character's on play ability. So if a character says when this card is played from the hand or something, it just loses that and it just never gets it ever. Um, this card is, I would say, probably a must have in any orange deck nowadays. Motivational speech, one, no color requirement. Play to your home. When this card enters play, choose a color. Your main character has that color? Ooh, that's so... Oh, man, that's that's so juicy. Because that essentially means that you, you can just flip your friend whenever you want to. Sorry, you can flip your main character whenever you want to to get three power. And then use this to make it any color you want to and fix all of your all of your problems that the, all of your color problems are fixed with this one card so yeah three color decks are looking pretty juicy with this and the traveler too that's that's really interesting yeah I really like this this is good petrified two for three white play on a friend that friend loses and can't have abilities can't move can't be frightened and can't contribute its power to confronting problems or fits face-offs nice so essentially this card just doesn't exist anymore it's not even frightened so you can't do anything about it <laughs> all right all right good stuff pirate couture um it's one cost two white play on a friend's that friend has showy too. Whoa. That's not bad. I like that. That's okay. Pirate ship. This is the thing that works with Captain Salad Dressing. Uh, play to your home. Uh, main phase. Pay one and exhaust this card to move one of your f characters. Nice. And then if you have um, the captain in play, then it doesn't cost anything. It's literally just exhaust this to move one of your characters for free. Well then, uh, pirate decks are looking pretty darn scary. This is a good card. The great thing is it's colorless, so you could legitimately just run it in any and every deck that you have that has um, travelers in it, and just get a really easy way to move your travelers around, even if you don't want to run the captain, so seems pretty good to me. Spoopy Ruins, two for two yellow. Play to your home. Opponents flip one fewer cards during face-offs. Ooh, that's nasty. If an opponent would draw a card during his or her main phase, uh, you may exhaust this card instead. If you do, skip that draw. <laughs> nice. Nice one. Okay. Okay. So I'm guessing this also cancels out like event cards and stuff. So if your opponent's like, uh, let's get this party started, you go, no, let's not get this party started. Ha ha. That's the only thing I can think of. If it only works for the uh, pay one action token to draw a card effect, then this card's not that great. But if it works for cards that let you draw a card, then this is actually a pretty decent card. Tempest Shadows Airship. Hmm, one cost, no color requirement. Play to your home. Main phase, pay one and exhaust this card to move one of your troublemakers. Ooh. At the end of a face-off, you may put one of your flipped troublemakers into your hand. Uh, okay, I get it. I see where they're going with this. You flip a troublemaker for a face-off, and then you put it into your hand, and then you play it. I get it. I don't know if I would say it's worth it. Oh, man, I don't know. It might be, because you can, like, play a troublemaker, and then once it's flipped face up, you can play another troublemaker and then move your previous troublemaker to the other problem and then have a troublemaker on each problem. I just don't know. It seems okay, but I wouldn't say it's necessary. Finally, the troublemakers. Let's see where we're going. We've got Capper Dapper Dawes, Capper Dapper Paws. <laughs> With uh, zero points for power, opponents can't move characters away from here. That's 
Very, very interesting. So once you get a character onto Capper's problem, they're stuck there for a really long time. So, okay, let's say hypothetically you're running a deck around this card and you're doing something that boosts Troublemakers up. Uh, man, you could really mess your opponent up by just forcing all of their opponent, all of your opponent's characters just stick to this card's problem and then you can do whatever you want to on the other problem. You can initiate a double face off. You can do whatever you want. This, this has potential. I like this card. Well, I found our face up, Duder. Uh, Grubber, five power, zero bonus. When this card enters play face up, uncovered, uh, an opponent discards a card. If you have Tempest Shadow in play, that opponent instead reveals their hand and you choose a card and they discard that card. So interesting. I like it. I like it a lot. It's kind of like a really annoying version of um, Yellow Paris Sprite as if that wasn't annoying enough. It's a little underwhelming considering what I was expecting. I hope there are more cards like this that have effects that come in play face up, but okay. I mean, I get it. You specifically have to run it in a deck that plays it face up, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's all right. It's whatever. Storm Guards, zero power, zero bonus. When this card enters play face up, uncovered. Oh, the, we did get another one. Nice. Uh, put eight plus one counters on this card. When an opponent moves a character, remove a plus one counter from this card. Oh, that's kind of sad. I don't know if I like that as much. Because every time your opponent moves a character, this card gets weaker by one point. And uh, right now, we're all about the movement, so... Yeah, I don't know if I like this card as much as I like uh, Grubber, but it's okay. I get it. Tempest, of course, they couldn't resist giving Temper Tantrum her own villain card. Uh, it's not even epic. When this card is uncovered, you may move... Wait a second. You may turn a main character to its start side. This is the... Okay, all right. I see where we're going with this. This is the card that lets you turn your main back over to its start side so you can recycle its effect. Nice. Whew. Ah, my queen. My queen Chrysalis. I believe I found another pawn for your deck. Pay three. Control a friend. Tempest. Pay three. Control a friend. Tempest. Pay three. Control a friend. Tempest. Oh. 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 It's it's delicious. I'm, I'm drooling a little bit. This is an interesting card. I mean, it gives your opponent a point when they beat it, which kind of sucks, but I mean, I would trade one point to get my card's effects. Now we're out of the interesting and exciting cards and on to the boring problems. God, I hate looking at problems. Banquet Baking. When you move a character to this problem, you may put a one power Earth Pony token into play here. That's pretty good. Uh, sounds like some interesting memes if you're doing the whole um, pink tokens thing. Caught off guard. Opposing characters here with two or less printed power can't contribute their power to face offs. Whoa, that's, uh, that's pretty dangerous actually. I don't know if I like that. Daring escape, when you confront this problem, you may move one of your characters. Okay, I mean, that's really good for traveler decks, I guess. I wish it had starting problem, but I guess that would be broken or something. Down the drain, opponents can't move characters to this problem unless they pay one. Whoa, it's a problem that has showy one. What a meme. Opposing characters here have minus one power during face-off, so that sounds like it'd be pretty good for a troublemaker control deck. Pearl Heist, it's just a starting problem, but it does have a bonus of two, which is very interesting. Searching high and low, which is pretty much just begging your opponent to flip on you and take control of the game. Swaying the Sea Ponies, when you move a character to this problem for the first time each turn, you may move another one of your characters to this problem. Okay, and it's got a bonus of three, so uh, Traveler decks take note. Now we get on to the real juicy stuff, the secret rares. Rainbow and Mullet, 3 cost, 3 power, blue, hasty, when this card enters play, you may move up to 2 of your characters. Not bad for 3, honestly, getting a 3 power pony in play and also getting to move 2 characters is really, really good. Uh, pretty much a must deck for travelers. Applejack, Festival Caterer, 4 for 4, Diligent 1. If you would put 1 or more plus 1 counters on one of your friends, you may put that many plus 1 on that friend instead. Nice. So if you travel, you get two plus one counters instead of one, which is pretty broken in some cases. And if you use diligent, then you get plus one diligent no matter what your diligence is. Cool. I'd also like to point out this isn't once per turn, so feel free to abuse the crap out of it. Main six, 
pink card, five for five. When you play this card, gain control of each opposing friend until the end of the score phase. Oh no. Oh, what an awful card. You play this and then you drop a Lunar or something and you sacrifice all of your opponent's friends. Oh man, it's so it's so good. It's so good that Pretty Lanes isn't still legal. Because <laughs> that would just be so disgusting. Ha! <sighs> What a great card. I like this card. Main six, uh, one in every deck. Old Temper Tantrum's got herself an ultra rare as well, of course. She's got Prepared, she's four for four, and Purple. Uh, during the main phase, you can exhaust this card to put a Troublemaker from your hand face up into play, and then you put a token of that card face up into play. Is it at the same one, or is it at both? I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but if this card is at both, then that's actually really cool, because it means you can put a Grubber in play face up and make your opponent discard two cards from their hand for free. You don't even have to pay for putting it in play. Oh man, and then you throw Yellow Parasprite into the mix. <laughs> oh no, that's... Ooh, ooh, that is spicy. You play a Yellow Parasprite face up, and then you put a token of Yellow Parasprite on the other problem, and then if he gets some resources in play, like some Dilemmas, then you could have even more yellow Parasprites in play and put tokens up. Oh man, that's that's really cool. Spike, Master of Ceremonies, 4 for 4, white character. If you would choose an effect while playing a song card, you can use all of them instead. Okay, neat. Uh, that gives you a lot of... Actually, yeah, that, that gives you a lot of value on your song cards. But the problem with this is... I wish both song cards had white if this was the case, so you could use them both, because this kind of limits you to only really using the one with the white color requirement. The other one would be way too difficult, so ah, I, it's, it's a little underwhelming for an ultra rare, but I do get what they were going for. Queen Novo, this is where things get really interesting. The player with the lowest power total wins face-offs involving this card. Now. I want you to keep in mind, it says lowest in face-offs, so it counts for all face-offs. Uh, you can do some really interesting things with this card. I think my absolute favorite thing you can do with this is you can throw it in decks that use showdown cards to just immediately win. Because the more power your opponent has, the easier it is for you to just win. <laughs> you play like the absolute minimum requirement that it takes to beat a problem or to uh, initiate a double face off or something and then as long as you just make sure you lose on purpose then you just win it <laughs> this card can be built around to do some really interesting things and i'd really like to experiment with it we've got a triple color princess celestia five for five she's blue pink and yellow swift while you have more friends than your opponent this card costs three instead of five which is Pretty good, I like that. Uh, if one of your friends here would be frightened or dismissed, you can move it to your hand instead. So if your opponent is trying to frighten or dismiss a character that has good on play effects, you can just put it in your hand and drop it again. And this counts for Princess Celestia, which is beautiful. So essentially, if Princess Celestia is ever targeted by something that would get rid of her, you can just put her in her hand and drop her again. So this is an okay card. Honestly, uh, I think I think they estimated how good this card would be overall, but I think it's pretty decent. There's also a triple color Princess Luna in Midnight. Five for five, stubborn. Main phase exhausts this card to frighten a friend. Opponents can't move characters unless they pay one. So this card is undoubtedly better than her sister in every conceivable way. Stubborn. You can exhaust this to frighten a friend, so with Stubborn, you don't lose that power during face-offs and stuff. And opponents cannot move characters unless they pay one, and that's on top of any other uh, requirements they have to move their characters. And this also counts for effects, so if your opponent has an effect that says that they can move one of their characters, they actually lose that effect unless they pay the one action token. This card is glorious, this card is beautiful, but the only thing that I hate about this card, and looking at it just makes me angrier and angrier, it doesn't have blue. Why doesn't it have blue? This would be such a beautiful card to build around if it did. I know it wouldn't be as perfectly built because it would have to lose one of these effects, but 
gosh darn it, I wish this was blue instead of something else. Think about it for a second. If this were blue, you could run this with Uneven Ground Rainbow Dash, and you would have Goosebump Giver, and you would have all of the great blue Frighten cards. I know that purple kinda sorta has great Frighten, especially now in the newer sets, but I really wish I could run this alongside all of the great um, Frighten support that blue has. Other than that though, this card is fantastic. Definitely worth being an ultra rare. The Pearl of Transformation. Play to your home, resource, artifact, unique. Uh, you pay one less to transform, nice. Main phase, exhaust this card to search your deck for a card with a transform cost and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck. Nice. So pretty much a must play of three in every uh, Skystar deck. Um, I guess you could run this in Sea Ponies, but I really don't see Sea Ponies being a thing. Uh, I think just running Skystar and then maybe running some Sea Ponies besides Skystar would be nice, but mm, really I just see this as a Skystar card. If you want to run it with other ponies, then that's cool, but I think for right now until we get other forms of Transform, maybe like Breezies in the future or something, then I think this is mainly just a Skystar card. The Staff of Sakanas, play to your home. Uh, your main character has plus three power. <laughs> what? Oh my god, what is this? Main phase, pay one and exhaust this card to start a face-off involving your main character and your and an opposing friend. If you win the face-off, frighten that friend. Oh my gosh. This is really, really good, actually. I, I really like this card. Um, two, two cost, it doesn't have any color requirements, it's got seven power, and it makes your main character six power without any other boosts, and every turn you can frighten a friend, essentially. This is pretty good. I like this a lot. Guys, whew, it is the last card. Storm King, six power, worth two points. Troublemaker, epic. Characters can't move to or from this card's problem unless that controller pays two. Oh cool, he's like a uh, capper, but he's pretty much better in every conceivable way, I guess. Um, although I guess with capper they can't move at all, and with this they can choose to move if they decide to pay two. This is, uh, I mean it's definitely okay. I, I mean I wouldn't really say it's like last card of the set worthy, but I would say it's a pretty good card. Ooh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally done. Sorry if I sounded a little weird at some points during this. Uh, what happened is my computer actually crashed three times and cut out about half of my recording each time it happened. Uh, kind of my fault for not saving more often, but it, it was, it was kind of rough on my voice. Either way, though, we did manage to get through the entire thing, and if you're watching this far, you managed to get through the entire thing, so let's talk about this a little bit. Um, I really, really like this new set. It breathes some life into some of the old deck ideas that I used to have, and it introduces some really interesting mechanics, like obviously the pirates are something I'm really excited about. Uh, Fluttershy and uh, Fluttershy and Applejack. Man, I am looking forward to a deck with them so much. Um, I could see Pinky Sparkle Surprise being better with the new dual color cards. Uh, I could see a lot of really interesting stuff happening with the set. It seems like the game is getting really, really fast, like um, much, much faster than I was anticipating it getting. Uh, I, I really like it, honestly. Um, I think this is probably like the set to get into it with if you maybe have been out of the game for a while. Is it my favorite set? It's definitely up there. I'm still kind of leaning towards Discord being my favorite set, but honestly, if I play with this a bit more, it could be my favorite. So I've actually been talking for about four hours straight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. My voice is kind of, my voice is a little, <coughs> outro, outro, please, outro. Hey, you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock. If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. 
See you next time.